When profits from all their oil, mining, and drug company monopolies soared, the banksters became the world's richest men, but their greed had no limits. They wanted to own the entire world, so they put their heads together and came up with an ingenious scheme to take control of all of the world's money and riches. Whoever owns all of the world's money, they said, owns the world. Using their media corporations, they launched a gigantic advertising campaign. They told people they no longer had to save up their money and wait for all the things they wanted in life. They could have everything they ever dreamed of right now. All they needed was a shiny plastic card. People rushed to fill up their wallets with shiny plastic cards instead of money. Like lottery winners, they went on drunken buying sprees and bought everything in sight. All the things they couldn't afford. Nobody even noticed when their hard-earned paychecks were automatically deposited in the bank without ever being cashed. Suddenly, people's bills, fines, taxes, and purchases were automatically deleted from their accounts and paying by check quickly became unfashionable. Eventually, money was phased out altogether and replaced with units of credit, which were really nothing more than numbers on a computer screen. The next thing the banksters did was replace people's plastic cards with their newest invention, barcode tattoos. These barcode tattoos contained all of a person's private credit information and could be invisibly tattooed onto people's wrists. Since having a wrist tattoo is like having an invisible debit card, and since nobody could steal it from you, everybody rushed to get one. All people had to do to buy whatever they wanted in life was scan their wrist tattoo over a scanner, and so the power for people to buy their most basic necessities in life fell completely into the hands of the banksters. Suddenly, people couldn't buy food, medicine, or even a cup of coffee without scanning their wrist tattoo. Eventually, people sobered up from their drunken spending sprees. What do you mean you've got no money? They realized they had traded their hard-earned money for nothing more than a bunch of numbers on a computer screen. Their real money had become virtually unreal. Not only did the banksters own all of the world's money, they now had the power to delete a person's lifetime of savings. But why would these friendly banksters do such an evil thing? To force people's cooperation. This futuristic scenario isn't as futuristic as it sounds. Invisible wrist tattoos with all of a person's credit information have already been developed. So what can you do to take back control over your money before the banksters phase out the world's money system. Withdraw your money from their banks. By putting your money in their banks, you are enriching and empowering them with control over your money and eventually over your life. Cut up your credit and debit cards. Pay only with cash or money order or certified check. What are you doing? People are under the illusion that their money is safe in the bank and that the banksters are honest. The truth is, the money you put in their banks isn't really there. Although there hasn't been a global economic crash since the 1930s, another crash could happen at any time and without warning. Economic crashes don't just happen, they are made to happen. Economic booms and busts are controlled by how much money the banksters put in circulation through their loans and interest rates. People believe Alan Greenspan, who announces U.S. interest rates, works for the Fed, and that the Fed is the U.S. government. The Fed is not the U.S. government. The Fed is the privately owned Federal Reserve banks, which are owned and controlled by the banksters. Every day, the banksters move trillions of dollars around the world's banking and financial markets. They decide if the markets go up or down, soar or crash. But why in the world would they want to crash the markets? to destroy people's confidence in the money system and create a dependent, cashless society. According to the Zionist plan written by Adam Weishaupt and Albert Pike, the ruling families will bankrupt the middle class and repossess their private property. 
They will reinstate the military draft and continue disarming nations until there's no one left to disarm. They will make it illegal to possess a firearm or any other weapon that could be used to resist them. When the crash does come, they'll blame it on the phony war on terror, which they control and finance on both sides. So what else can you do to take back control over your own money? Take all of your money out of the rigged stock markets and money markets. Cash in your treasury bills, bonds, and retirement savings plans. Most of the retirement funds have already been looted. Trade in your paper money for something of real value like gold, silver, and precious metals and stones. So where can you put your cash and valuables besides the bank? In a personal safe or a very good hiding place. It will prove to be much safer than the bank. It's not the neighborhood thieves you have to worry about, it's the global thieves. By keeping your hard-earned money and valuables out of the banks and stock markets, you are depriving the banksters of money for their wars, weapons, and mass murder. You are taking back control of your own money. You know where it is, and it's available when you need it. No interest, no service charges, no bank machines. Many people are under the illusion that their money is printed by the government. Money is not printed by the government. It is printed privately by the banksters who stamp it with their Masonic symbolism. Some community groups are creating their own system of money and buying and selling services and goods from each other tax-free. Monopoly money works great. So do IOUs and the barter system. When the crash does come, the markets and all of the banks will be closed for business. If and when they reopen again, your investments will be worth next to nothing and your paper money will get you only 10 cents on the dollar. A tumbling right from the opening bell that now Jones Industrial is plunging more than 650 points. If you think you own your car, your house, or other credit purchases, an economic crash will remind you of who the real owners are. Most people believe that their hard-earned tax money pays for things like roads, bridges, schools, and other public services. The truth is that every penny of your tax dollars pays for your nation's national debt to the banksters. The banksters then loan your hard-earned tax money back to your government and charge interest on it for your basic public services. Before the bombing and theft of the country of Iraq, every citizen in America owed the banksters $70,000 per citizen. It is your skyrocketing debt and your nation's skyrocketing debt to the banksters that have helped them enslave the world and they're doing it with your money, your labor and your approval. Since the ruling families and their brotherhood of wealthy insiders hide their wealth and don't pay taxes, why should you? Find ways to avoid paying tax monies to these gangsters. If you earn an average salary over your lifetime, you will pay the banksters more than one million dollars in taxes. Three quarters of your lifetime of work pays for your government's debt to the banksters and your personal debt to the banksters on your mortgaged house, your car loan, student loans, and other loans. The bankster's game is all about taking your money in taxes and then loaning your money back to you again with interest. They take property taxes, gas taxes, food taxes, clothing taxes, and dozens of other taxes and fees. Collectively, the public willingly hands over trillions of dollars annually to the banksters by depositing money in their banks, paying taxes to their central banks, supplying labor to their corporations, buying stock in their corporations, and then spending savings in their corporate superstores. So what do the banksters do with all your money that they pocket? They bomb, rob, kill, colonize, exploit, and advance their cause for global control and for your eventual enslavement. A third solution is to refuse to fight the banksters' murderous wars and to stop supporting others who fight their wars. One of America's favorite slogans is, support your troops, which means support your troops no matter what, even if the war is a lie. 
even if innocent families are being bombed, burned, and crippled with your tax money. Even if your tax money is paying teenagers in uniform to die by the thousands for the lie. The majority of recruited soldiers are naive, duped, unemployed teenagers who are romanced into believing they are heroes fighting for freedom. But what they are fighting for is the wealthy ruling families who are systematically disarming the world of all weapons of resistance to their global empire. We've talked to not to conquer anybody, but to liberate people. A fourth solution is to stop voting. Most nations have two main political parties, which means there are only two candidates for the top job. One is the candidate for the very rich, and the other is the candidate for the even richer. Both candidates are sponsored by the